Okay, so confession time. I originally did this entire video as an HD 7950 graphics card, but an eagle-eyed viewer by the name of DCRR Green, or Dr. Green, I think that they might be known, noticed that the board actually said 7970 on it. So just a big thank you for that and leaving a comment. You caught it super early, so yeah, big thanks to you. So this is really the second time I'm filming this video. I've rewritten the script and sorted all of that out. So let's get on with it and talk about what the HD7970 I've got here and whether it's a contender for games in 2024. The HD7970 was launched in January 2012 and was touted as one of their top graphics cards at the time, as noted by the 7970 model number. It does support DirectX 12, though I must say I did receive some errors regarding this while trying to launch some games, like the new First Descendants, for example. It's based on the Tahiti XD graphics processor and built on the 28 nanometer process. This card also has three gigabyte of GDDR5 memory, a 384 bit memory bus, and a power draw of 250 watts. Because this is the gigabyte WinForce version, it has been factory overclocked just slightly from 925 megahertz to 1000 megahertz and has a memory clock of 1375 megahertz, which is about an 8% increase in performance over the stock 7970, which would have been really a welcome bump at the time, albeit a small one. I did purchase this card from my local CEX store for £30, and as I said above, it was sold to me as a 7950. Picture on screen right now of the actual graphics card in the shop window, so quids in I suppose for that. And I thought it was a good price for the performance I managed to achieve. And as I said, there were some issues with some games and their compatibility, like Helldivers 2, surprise, surprise, didn't run. But also that new First Descendants, as I said, didn't run either. F1 2024 gave me an error, but everything else I threw at it really worked pretty well to say the least. Now for display, I used the HDMI 1.4a port, though the card does come with a DVI port, two mini DisplayPort 1.2s, so you've also got a bit of a choice there as well, depending on what is available to you. The driver I downloaded was from the AMD website and it was the Adrenaline 22.6.1 driver, which was a recommended driver for Windows 10 64-bit edition. There was a notice about legacy drivers, but this was the latest AMD offered me Anyway, I also did check out Relive or Relive because it was something that was suggested on Reddit and also the unofficial Nimes Radeon drivers, though on various websites I couldn't find anything that said they were compatible with something as old as the HD 7970, though newer cards were covered. So I did just avoid downloading these two and just stuck to the official driver that AMD really suggested on their website. If you do know any differently though, or if I did miss a trick here, I would love to hear from you in the comments. After all, I'd rather this be a learning experience so we can improve our future video offerings, as I do have a few more old graphics cards coming up in the future. On my test bed, just to be transparent, I have got a Ryzen 5 5600 backed up with 16 gigabyte of RAM. Now, of course, you'd have to expect that there will be instances where the CPU will probably do a bit of lifting with some games, but I did use them to minimize bottlenecks. I've also got a terabyte of M.2 storage in there as well. So with all that said, let's check out some games. At 1080p medium settings, Apex Legends ran at a very respectable frame rate, with at times it hitting close to 100 FPS with the 1% low coming in at around the mid to high 40s. The game did feel extremely smooth to play, and yes, while I am not the best at Apex Legends, as you can tell from my video, but the gameplay was super smooth, and if you wanted to play Apex on this graphics card, it is definitely more than capable. This game is going to survive the test of time because it just seems to work all the time with anything you throw at it. Now, I don't know why I have so much trouble getting Afterburner to work, something to do with the EA anti-cheat, but I used the Steam FPS counter, which I suppose is as good as any. And as you can see, it was hitting a solid 60 on a 1080p resolution with medium settings. Though I did turn off things like motion blur and chromatic aberration and all of that nonsense, it did also run really well and it felt like a decent experience. On medium settings at 1080p, Counter-Strike 2, no surprise, ran very well and gave me close to 70 to 80 frames per second. It did drop back down to the 50s and 60s when things like smoke and fire hit the screen, but it was hardly noticeable for me anyway and I was only playing against bots because again, I am a proper rubbish at competitive games, but it still ran very smoothly and it did look nice and sharp. 
Now, I wanted to give this a try because it is a game that I do absolutely enjoy playing and it's extremely well optimized as well, so it does have that going for it. I did have to run the game at 1080p with a low quality preset and turn off all of the additional graphical effects. And during gameplay, I was getting a nice mix of 100 FPS when not in combat, but it did drop down to the mid 70s and high 60s when a lot of combat was going on, but still super playable. Fallout 4 did an auto detect for me when I launched it for the first time, and it chose a 1080p resolution at a high quality preset, which seemed a little surprising, but getting close to 60 FPS with dips into the mid 40s during intense combat was enough for me to feel comfortable playing the game. Also, ignore me trying to fight these bot flies and ghouls. I am running out of ammo very, very quickly on my save file, and I did have a bit of a nightmare with a spawn, and the only weapon I do have to use is a pair of concrete fists. Now this will be a quick one because I ran the Far Cry 6 built-in benchmark because I installed it for the first time and it made me start a new game and it did give me a 720p resolution with a low graphical quality preset. An average of 56 FPS would be a decent enough frame rate to play the game though I must say I don't have any real experience of this game. It was installed on the system and I just ran with the benchmark. Fortnite for me was a mixed bag with the 7950. The lobbies and drop were really ropey and it took a bit of time to calm down a little and settle when landing on the ground. But when I was in the actual game, having a run around and collecting all of my loot and eventually getting into a bit of combat, I was hitting above that 60 FPS mark and I am all about that. Now I thought I'd give this a try. I played at 1080p at the original graphic settings as it's called in this game, and I was actually surprised at just how stable it was. Sure, I wasn't getting anywhere near the 60 FPS mark that everyone strives for, and I would suggest dropping your graphics down if that is your aim to something like 720p and drop those graphical presets down. But for a consistent 30 FPS with a 1% low of around 25 and the mid 20s, I thought it was an absolutely playable experience, especially during the boss fight I was doing that you can see on screen now. And it did look really nice considering this is an 11 year old or so graphics card. Now Grounded is probably my favourite survival game out there and is definitely worth a play if you get the chance. On a graphics card like this though it didn't do great at 1080p medium settings. It was a bit choppy and at times it did hit the low 20s. If combat got busy it wouldn't probably have been playable especially in somewhere like the Ant Hill or Termite Hills. Get the graphics dropped down to 720p and achieve a bit more frames. Now what can I say, it ran beautifully and was hitting a mid 80s frame rate and looked great and played nice and smooth at 1080p with a medium graphic setting. It hit a very nice consistent 80s and above frame rate and at times peaking the mid 100s, so very impressed with the Blizzard shooter. Okay, so I'm not really a fan of this game because I am absolutely terrible at it, but I will say it did run very well on the 7950. It wasn't quite hitting that 60 FPS consistently, but the late 50s was nice enough. Just don't judge me on my gameplay here as I am not at all made for quick sprint shooters like this. I played on the zoom app, which seemed pretty bright and detailed, and for sure there were no problems at all. So the question is, is the Radeon HD 7970 a capable card for 2024? Well, for sure. If you're an esports player, or if you are still wrapped up in games from the last few years, and you're not really ready to jump to 1440p or 4K displays, or even if you're in need of a second or spare graphics card, then this could be definitely something to keep in mind. It's incompatible with newer games now, and driver support, although I did find one compatible with the card on the AMD website, it won't last forever. So do keep that in mind as well. But for £30, it is so surprising to see what this card is capable of. Thank you very much for checking out this video of the HD7970. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos, and also let us know in the comments down below, have you still got one of these cards in your system, or are you looking at, I don't know, building a basic entry-level gaming PC? and you're interested in this card, let us know in the comments down below. As I say, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.